Yeah. This is the first of two groundbreaking court cases that I was involved in in 2017. Two court cases that I was totally successful in. This document is a 74 page document of everything that was said in that appeal that has been typed up independently by independent transcribers at a cost of £28 per page. £28 per page times 74. That is approximately £2,018, I think it is. £2,018 of public funding that has gone absolutely to waste. As I said, this was an appeal that I was victorious in in 19th of January 2017 at Queen Elizabeth II Law Courts, Newton Street. Newton Street Courthouse is a courthouse that exclusively accommodates trials for that of cases of a sensitive nature. And I would have to agree with the directions board on that, that my case was very, very sensitive in terms of what was said about myself and the paperwork that was submitted by the police to the Crown Prosecution Services in that instance. What bothered me about this case was of all the people that saw the paperwork that was presented to them, none of it was of a qualitative nature. It was of a very quantitative nature, but it was not of a qualitative nature, i.e. nobody could even be bothered to question the authenticity of what was being presented before them. That was what made it one-way traffic and that was what was scary about it. And it was very, very frustrating as well in terms of the fact that one trial hearing judge saw all the paperwork and evidence, he didn't question it. The second trial hearing judge saw all the paperwork, he didn't question it. The third trial judge on the 27th of July 2016, he saw all the paperwork and did not question none of the paperwork. Which again, it sort of goes against the ethos of, of, of law and fairness. Then I was sentenced in September 2016. Um, they sent that back to Birmingham for sentencing for another three judges to look at this grossly falsified paperwork and evidence, another Crown Prosecutor to look at this grossly falsified evidence, and another senior advisor to look at this grossly falsified evidence. So you've got you've got like six judges in the first trial, three sets of prosecution and three sets of senior advisor, and none of them didn't question the authenticity of the work. The paperwork, excuse me. It took for me to appeal to the Crown Court of Appeal for another three judges, i.e. he's on a judge car and two lay magistrates that were sitting either side of him to come to the c c conclusion that the case just bore all the hallmarks of negligence from West Midlands Police. Why did it take for so much people to look at the paperwork for it to come to that conclusion? It just says to me that it's a common feature that I'm seeing amongst black men in Anglo-Saxon held strongholds such as England, Canada, the United States and Australia is that when you're in the criminal justice system, you're fighting that system for at least two decades. These people are actually blood sucking leeches. They're not going to stop until they render you useless to society, i.e. they are hell bent in taking away your youth and having your mind and having everything that you do on a day to basis concentrated on the criminal justice system. That's what these people are set out to do as far as I'm concerned. Again, I'd like to give an extra special thanks to His Honour Judge Carr and those two magistrates that were sitting beside him for seeing the compulsive and pathological line that was being played out again in such theatrical circumstances. Ruling Judge Carr, we have all had the benefit individually last night to consider the evidence in the case and have done so together this morning. The end result is that whatever our view, we, ca we cannot and have decided to be sure on the state of the evidence and accordingly the appeals in relation to both of the offences will be allowed. Mr Ricketts, that was my barrister in the appeal. I am grateful your honour. Judge Carr, the senior judge in the trial and the convictions quashed. Thank you. Is there anything else? Mr Salisbury, who is the prosecutor in that case? No, thank you. I'd like to give a little bit of a shout out to the prosecutor, Mr Salisbury in that case as well because there's things that he could have directed towards me in terms of me being cross-examined he could have quite easily made it look like that I was guilty 
But in fairness to Mr. Soulsby, that senior prosecutor, he didn't go about that route. He was probably one of the people that, one of those agents of the judiciary that looked at the paperwork and said that this is completely false, let's get this out of here. And with me winning that appeal, that has obviously enabled me to go and sue, or shall I say, make a claim for compensation and damages against the protagonist of that, which was West Midlands Police, because their role in that was of momentous proportions. Yurugu's Enox by Dr. Mwalimu Baruti. Mwalimu Baruti. <laughs>